I'm getting a lot of Solana questions on Twitter and YouTube about, hey, do you think Solana still is going to get under $30 this bear market after this pump? Let's take a look at the charts and let me show you visually. Are you ready? Let's get it. <laughs> I wouldn't say concern, but I'm coming up short on words here. My my biggest concern about those questions within the all the sentences I saw is the, the, the common denominator in there is given that it just pumped because of this pump or this pump. That that's my concern with all these questions. <clears throat> and let me show you uh, first why that concerns me. Um, because that's the preface of the question. And I think the preface or the reason to even be asking the question is invalid. And I want to show you that. Therefore, you shouldn't have asked those questions is kind of what I'm saying. But I, but I, I get that um, I'm here to, um, you know, a lot of my channel attracts folks a little newer to chart reading or newer to crypto. But I, I want to I want to show you visually why that question is sort of invalid, at, at least for now. All right. Let's take, see this big uh, move down right here and see a lower high and it went back down, see a lower high and it went back down. All right, let's, um, so do I, I, if I said back here, I think it's gonna ride this line for a long time because it's a major support area. So imagine somebody said, boom, it hit it, right? And after I said that phrase <coughs> and then it pumps up, and then I get those same questions. Hey, Tim do, uh, or Kosas, do you still think it's going to ride this line for the time frame you said? Um, even though I didn't make that guess, but do you still think it's going to ride that go back down to that line because of this pump? Because of this pump, do you really think it's going to go back down there? Right? And that's the same thing. Watch. So if I take from here to here and I line up wick low uh, like that and I zoom in here. Maybe make this a little uh, bolder here. Make it white. There you go. Look at that. See that? It almost goes up to the same area. So yeah, I, I do think that it could easily go down. This isn't a pump. This is just a measly lower high. It's a, it's a significantly lower high. I mean, look. Now, maybe start asking that question if you get a daily closure above this area or especially this area, but that's all the way back up at 84 bucks. And a maybe ask that question at 66 bucks. But, but Bitcoin only closed the candle at six or not Bitcoin Solana only closed the candle at sixty dollars, right? And this is a this is a, a measly 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 lower high in the grand scheme of things. All right, now let's uh, take a visual of some other you know failed bounces here that continue going lower. Um, you had a so this one did continue going way way lower. So it, let's say imagine back here or no um, or around here I said guys this is gonna break down it's gonna go let's say even to let's say a dollar 30 like you know maybe i made that get or i didn't make that guess but let's just say i did and then it tanks and then it bounces and people ask tim do you still think it's going to hit a dollar 30 yes i do i do but let's let's see how large this is and let's line up the uh drop to the wick low about like that and now let's zoom in how high did it go it's the same height look see that look look how that aligns Yes, I still think it's going to go under 30 bucks. So is this making sense? Like, um, here's an easier way to see it. If Solana is going to go under $30, you can expect that to happen. You can almost bet your bottom dollar it's going to do something like this, as opposed to this being a condition where you start doubting $30. Rather, this is like, this is what you should expect. Right. It's not going to go straight there. Like not every day is going to be a red candle all the way down to third under 30 bucks. Then you get a buy, then it goes straight up to 150. That'd be great, but that's not how it works. It's going to bore the crap out of you. It's 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 almost like um, <laughs> I see a lot of uh, Indian American uh, comedians uh, make, um, you know, kind of make uh, jokes about uh, Bollywood and how, um, you know, the. Um, a lot of movies have a guy chasing a girl or whatever, and it's long and drawn out and it lasts three hours long, you know, the flirtation stuff. Bitcoin, so kind of like that, Bitcoin is going to flirt with those levels. It's not going to go straight down there, right? It's, it's not going to go straight there. No pun intended about going straight down there. I didn't mean that, but um, it's not going to go straight down there. It's going to flirt and tease. And this is exactly what you can expect. Ho hopefully that makes sense without being sensitive about multicultural stuff. Um, all right, and 
So let's take a look here. Now that we know we can still expect it to hit this next box, what can we expect around this box? Well, I probably wouldn't be excited at all until Solana on very small time frames gets back into this box and uses it as support. So has that happened? No, it hasn't. Therefore, it's just in limbo. And let's go back down here. And let's zoom into the very, very small time frames now that we know the gist of what's happening. Now that it hit roughly, uh, you know, rough levels here of a typical bounce, are we starting to get lower lows and lower highs on the micro time frames, the five minute chart? Yes, we, we still do. Could it do one more pump up? Sure, whatever. But you're still, you're still getting a, a downward formation. Let's go to the one hour chart. Do you have lower lows and lower highs yet on the one hour chart? Uh, technically, eh, it's not compelling. I mean, technically you do if you call this a low, because this closed lower, and this is a lower high, and this is a lower. So yeah, you do. You do. It is lower than this. Um, so even on the one hour chart, you now have a downtrend. Could it turn around and start working its way up before it comes down? Sure, it could, but it's still more likely to come back down if it had one more pump. But as of now, it looks like this might be done, and it's making lower lows and lower highs on the one hour chart. Are we, are, am I making sense here? Now, on the one hour chart doesn't give you strong, strong probabilities. It's more like the four hour you start getting better probably like it starts becoming a lot more certain, but I use the one hour to essentially front run the four hour signals that give you more determination. So is this going to be a local high? The four hour chart is still intact. So let's call this a, a, a low, a higher low and a higher low. These four hour candles closed above here. So you still have a higher high and or I mean a higher low and you have yet uh, you have the potential to make a higher high so the four hour chart is not uh viewing what um is not agreeing with the one hour chart yet however once the one hour through four hour are all in agreement that typically is enough to pull down or pull the daily chart in the same direction of agreement of this. Does that make sense? So I'm essentially showing you how to get a pre-signal and then a slightly more um, confirm or slightly more confident signal that then leads to the 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 final blow, like finish him. So the finish him, you know, if you played, if you're a '90s kid like me and you played Mortal Kombat on Sega, right? That was awesome, uh, Sega Genesis. Um, then uh, the finish me is when the daily is finally grabbed by the one through four hour charts and it also confirms it. So you, but if you wait that long to be in positions and or take action, that means like half of the move is over, right? So the, the, the more confirmation you wait for, the less of the move in money that you can make from that move. Does that make sense? That's why it's always good to know that how to front run, but also realize you are front running a more a more uh, ambitious signal, a, a more confirmed signal. So therefore, as you're front running it, you know that you might be wrong. It, hopefully, hopefully I'm making sense here, but you still, but it's still good to identify what type of signal am I following here? I'm following only a one hour signal, the four hours not agreeing yet. Therefore, I need to essentially step on eggshells and be very light with my approach here and how confident I am with my analysis. So right now, I, I can't really tell that if it's gonna break down uh, first or make another uh, little lo another uh, uh, local high first. Either could happen. I can't really tell because all I'm working off of is the one hour chart. So now you can see that my idea of short time frames, I don't know. It could go a little bit higher. Or it could go, you know, uh, back down to that pink box here. But I'm still confident. But in, in, in um, contrast to that, I'm still very confident. And I've given you the reasons why from a midterm time perspective, like the daily through weekly, why I'm none of this gives me reason to change my thoughts on the bigger stuff that it's going to go down lower, closer to 30 bucks or a little lower, like 22 to 30 bucks, right? Maybe even slightly lower than 22 if things get really nasty in the stock market. None of this is powerful enough to change my thoughts on that. And, and that is a, a less clear way, but it's yet another way to say, you know, those questions, they're, uh, um, there might not be enough, sorry, there might not be enough in the charts to have even asked those questions yet. Um, and the the main idea of this video is, um, is you, you the newer folks to crypto, it's, I'm seeing a lot of questions outside of the things I, I quoted earlier in this video. People, most people aren't understanding different timeframes and how to essentially 
put boxes in your brain. You need at least three distinct boxes of thinking when you're looking at charts. You need small time frames, mid time frames, and long time frames, and you have to separate that. It's it's as if you had three heads, right? So look at like triple cosa here, right? <laughs> like hello, okay. You have three heads, and they each think something totally. They're all they're they're viewing the chart with different eyes. Everything you need to be that. So when I talk about short term time frame, then you're this is the guy listening over here. This is my short term. This is my long term, and this is my midterm. Right? You literally need three heads or three different compartments. And I'm so at least in this video, I'm showing you the short term and the midterm time frame outside of the long term. Right? You have to think that way. You have to separate it. And um, so hopefully this uh, this video has been a little helpful on why I still think that uh, those uh, lower targets will be hit and. Not all my videos are this weird, <laughs> but I usually jump into the charts, but nothing's changed. And there we go. We'll see you next time.